In a, mixed, in, a, in a competitive marketplace, that message stands out. Let me tell you what your future will look like here. And I want to say key point number one, and I've got three or four of these things. The under 45-year-old workforce has been raised in a time where being different and standing out is not only appropriate, but desired. The older 46-year-old workforce has largely been rewarded for fitting in and not standing out. He's a regular Joe. You'll like him. He's a regular Joe. That's a compliment given to the boomers, the matures. The gener Key point number two, in affluent times, people enter adulthood later. I'm going to build on this in a second. Gen X did, and today's millennials continue the trend. Therefore, if you're not a member of today's youth, the world you knew at their age is much different than their world today. So, as a manager, don't ever think, this is what I would have wanted when I was your age. It's irrelevant. Ask yourself, is there anything you're doing for your workforce today because you're thinking this is the way I would have done it when I wanted it when I was your age? This applies to Generation X. This applies to baby boomers. This even applies to the older edges of the millennials. Society does. Key point number three. In so many parts of our lives today, we work hard to make it easier on others. But making it easier often doesn't make it better. We think that we're doing people favors by removing struggle from their lives. Yet it is conquering the struggles that gives meaning and are the seeds of happiness. Don't remove the struggles. Don't remove the struggles. It's the helicopter mom. It's the helicopter dad. And they're beginning to show up in the workplace. You're saying it's just easier for me to do it versus teaching people how to do it. And one of the things people like me who study this type of thing are seeing is a decline in happiness or a vain search in happiness for the un from the under 45-year-old crowd. Conquering the struggles is one of the keys to happiness. So I want you to start to teach. I want you to start to offer help. I want you to offer guidance. I want you to mentor. That's a big word, and I see you offer a big program like that. But don't remove the struggles. Achieving, overcoming the tr uh, struggles, achieving the end is a great source and in, in, in tool to happiness. So your question, where might you have removed the struggle for your team? My research suggests that the lack of struggles and the absence of a sense of achievement is also a cause for poor engagement. We're looking for engaged people. I want to find engaged employees. Well, give them an opportunity to set some struggles in front of them and achieve them. You must help them learn how to achieve them, but you don't give it to them. But a, 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 a real sense of where they fit in in the whole process. We assume that our employees know why what they do is important. But if they don't know where they fit in the whole scenario, they may not know why it's so important. You've learned it. They may not have. You must teach them. You must teach them where they fit in. So it's not, here's your job. Here's how things go. Here's your role. Here's your job responsibility. Here's your job description. It's something a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more empowering. It's something like this. When one of our servicemen or women move here, there can be a lot of nervousness about deployments, the wife and the kids and housing. So many questions come up. I want you to take it from the very beginning. This is the whole arc of the process. Not here's your job, but here's the whole arc of the process. And that family, that family may never get to know you, but here's how you make the lives of our nation's fortunes a little better for those of you in the military community. This is how you impact them. I want you to place their role in the whole scenario and be very clear. Once people are clear about how they fit in, about what their role is and how they help the customer, not just what they do, they become engaged in their workplace. And this is something that I think is truly missing in our society, in our workplace today. All right. Key point number four. The best managers and leaders in today's workplace have two things in common. Number one, they want more for their people than their people want for themselves. That's you in this room. You're the 10%. You must want more for your people than they want for themselves. You must see your people and who they can be, not who they are today. You must treat them like who they can be, not who they are today. You see them down the road. They may not see them this way. But when you begin to see them this way, they will become extraordinarily loyal to you and work very hard. Number two, they are predictable in their behavior. 
They don't have on days or off days. They're the same every day. Their people know what to expect day in and day out. It doesn't mean they have the same personalities. They don't, and you know this. But their people can walk in, the manager's people, the leader's people can walk in, engage them on the sidewalk, in the office, over the phone, on a conference call, whatever it is, and know who's going to be there. When your behavior becomes predictable to your people, and when you begin to see them for who they can be, not who they are, they will follow you to the ends of the earth. Your retention problems, if you have them in your workplace, will begin to diminish. They need predictable behavior from you. These behaviors are two big ingredients to creating loyalty. Ask yourself, am I this way? You can always become more interested in your staff and more predictable in your behavior.